Welcome to Jacob's LES. This video will introduce you to some of the things you need to be aware of while working with us, either in our workshop or out on site. Health and safety at work is one of the most important aspects of the job. We take this seriously, and to help show this, we have three accredited management systems. 18,001 for safety, 14,001 for environmental, and 9,001 for quality. If we start off ensuring that safety and quality are right, everything else will follow. Hello, I'm Andy Scargill, and welcome to Jacob's LES. Here at the company, we think the health, safety, environment and quality is vitally important to our business. We genuinely care and want you to go home safely. Please watch the following video, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Working in engineering means we all have basic health and safety training, like the safety passport, which is a mandatory requirement here. But we've all a responsibility to work in a safe manner and to challenge anything that may put colleagues, the job or ourselves in jeopardy. So we've heard about the company's commitment to working safely, but it's up to you too. The Health and Safety at Work 1974 Act places firm responsibility on the employer and employee alike to work safely. It's not just a requirement of the company, it's the law. There's severe penalties levied for non-compliance, so it's not being a job's worth if you do challenge someone or double check on your working methods and question things if you think the job or people, including you, are in danger. There are procedures and safe working practices in place for every job here and the correct procedures, having the right focus and understanding of the work, will result in us all going home safely at the end of a shift. Complacency in the workplace is deadly, even if you're experienced in the job you're doing. So please, think carefully, assess the risk, follow the right method and always work in a safe manner. Legally, all workplace risks need assessment, whether on site or out in the field. This might be a simple checkbox or a more complex written assessment, depending on the job's complexity. There's a method statement too, setting out how the work should be done and highlighting any potential risks. The Safe Plan of Action, or SPA, completes the paperwork, all part of making sure everyone is hazard aware. The SPA is your final check, setting out the action plan, identifying potential hazards and the right PPE for the job. Importantly, you have to describe the task and explain the safest plan of action so it will focus you on the work. Don't worry, it's a team effort and everyone involved on the job has to sign the SPA, so if you are unsure about things, then just ask. If something about the job doesn't add up, challenge the point and speak to your supervisor or line manager. Never make do. Remember, it's your responsibility to work safely. The Safety Observation Report Card, or SOR, is an integral part of the safety process and it can really make a difference to the workplace. It allows you to let us know about hazards or unsafe behaviour that you've come across. Risky situations you can't deal with yourself should be made safe and reported immediately. The card can be filled in later. Pop the card in the SOR box or hand to a member of the management or safety team so feedback can be given during toolbox talks or posted on the notice board. Remember too, positive feedback is just as important. So if you spot any good practice, share it using the SOR. It's not whistleblowing. It really is about keeping you and your fellow workers safe. Whether working here on site in the workshop or in the field, every employee must wear the basic PPE. Safety boots, overalls, eye protection, and the right gloves for the task. If you're working out on site, don't forget your hard hat too and some work will require specialist PPE. The company supplies everyone with the right PPE and if you do damage anything, get it replaced as soon as you can. Noisy environments need ear defenders or earplugs. 
the workplace will display signs when ear protection should be worn. In addition, noise levels may have been identified as a hazard in your risk assessment, or you may identify excessive noise in your SPA. Eye protection is important, and some work will need specialist kit too, like full face visors with chin guards for grinding, for example. If you are unsure if any other PPE is required, then do check. If you're working in the field, then the site induction there will explain the specific safe working for the site in more detail. Make sure you know the emergency phone numbers and nearest phone points for the site you are working at, so you can contact fire or first aid if needed. The location of safe routes, assembly points, safe havens or safety showers are also important, and if respirators or gas monitors are issued, know how to use them these things could save your life in an emergency. The alarms used in the field to signify fire or evacuation will be explained to you at the site induction, so make sure you understand what they mean. There may be a number of different alarms to be aware of, and each workplace will have its own fire evacuation and reporting procedures. We keep saying this, but if you don't understand or you're unsure, ask. Here at Jacobs LES, the alarm is tested weekly and it sounds like this. Make sure you know where both the assembly points are, both here and out in the field. Smoking is banned anywhere in the workplace, apart from allocated smoking areas during break times. The same applies to mobile phones, which should be switched off or left in a secure place. Accident and first aid procedures will differ according to the site you're working at, but here there are many first aiders in the building to assist if required. These people are identified on posters around the building. Qualified first aiders are always on site, or there are first aid boxes available from stores if you're working at a remote work location. Make sure you're trained to use them. Any incident or accident is reportable to your immediate supervisor they will report to the safety department and an investigation is started. We shouldn't need to say this, but we expect anyone working here to behave in a professional manner at all times, both in the workshop or out in the field. And there's a strict disciplinary procedure for those who don't. Anyone found under the influence of drink or drugs could be liable to dismissal, so the company expects full cooperation from everyone during a random testing for substance misuse. If you're taking prescribed medications that might interfere with your job, then let your line manager and the medical centre at your workplace know about this. You'll need to update your medical questionnaire with HR as well. If you can fulfil the right criteria, then you may be asked to drive company vehicles. You must be over 20 years old and have held a driving licence for more than a year you'll need to provide a copy of your licence for record purposes. There's a company driver training course to complete before you can use company vehicles and it applies to anyone using their own car on company business too. The legal requirements of the Highway Code must be followed at all times and smoking or the use of mobile phones in company vehicles is strictly banned. Specific site inductions in the field should identify the site regulations and any speed restrictions, but it's your responsibility to check this before driving onto site. Where key areas of critical risk have been identified, then a permit to work is mandatory. If you don't have a permit, then you shouldn't attempt the work. If requested to carry out work you're not permitted to do, or you're unsure about this, then speak to your supervisor. Working in confined spaces, or working at height for example, usually require additional training courses to have been completed. You'll also need to obtain permits for hot work or mechanical and electrical isolations. These are classified as being critical risk and should not be attempted unless you are competent. Vibration is classed as a workplace hazard and all handheld machinery has its own vibration signature, giving the user information on recommended usage times. Always complete the record of use or check with the safety department if you're unsure about anything. 
You can only mount an abrasive wheel to a grinder if you're properly trained, and there's in-house training for this as well. Any equipment or machinery should only be used by competent, trained personnel and operated with guards in place. This is for your own and others' safety. Non-compliance could result in disciplinary or even legal action being taken. If you think a machine is faulty or damaged, then report it immediately. Stop using it and lock it to prevent further use until it's been fixed. Use the right hand tool for the job and replace anything defective. Compressed air tool hoses and connections should be checked regularly for defects, must always have whip checks on all connections and must never be used to dust yourself down after a job. Store gas or air cylinders in the correct manner with vehicles transporting them displaying the correct signs and make sure any equipment being used in association with gas or oxygen, like acetylene welding torches for example, are pre-tested before use. Electrical hand tools should all carry an up-to-date portable appliance test or PAT tag to show they're safe to use. This will be checked as part of your daily inspection, but if you find the tag is out of date, then report it and return the tool for a retest. The same applies to faulty equipment. And remember, electrical hand tools will be 110 volts or less, so a transformer might be needed. If you are unsure, ask. All lifting gear needs appropriate test certificates and be listed on the SPA. We inspect and colour code these every quarter, so look out for the correct quarterly colour on the equipment that you use. Anyone using lifting equipment must be competent and have undergone the right training. The usual working at height rules apply and if you're working from scaffolding, remember to check the scaff tag. For any other work at height requiring the use of a harness, then you need the correct training for that job. MUPs and other mobile access such as genie booms or forklifts also require specialist training and you must be authorised by the company to use this type of equipment. Don't forget, whenever you're working above ground then the right guarding must be in place, protecting both you and your colleagues' working environment. Confined space working requires training and for some areas of work this does get quite specialist. You should never be tempted to enter a confined space without the correct training, rams, entry attendant and rescue plan. Most people now understand issues around incorrect manual handling, but don't forget to wear the right PPE for the job and plan the lift, highlighting this in the SPA. Make sure that you don't attempt to lift any significant weight and always bend the knees to keep your back straight. Keep a neat and tidy workplace is important, and that includes cabins and mess rooms both on site here and out in the field. Remember, a job is not complete until the area is clean and left tidy. Cleaning materials are provided throughout the site for you to use, and whilst the Armstrong Street toilets are cleaned, please leave these in a clean and tidy manner after use. Personal hygiene is important, so remove contaminated clothing and wash your hands before eating. Workplace hygiene is equally as important, so clear up as you work and dispose of waste in the appropriate recycling or waste bin. If you do have to leave a job before you've finished, then ensure it is left safe and secure. Correct use of fire extinguishers is important, so make sure you know where the fire points are in case you ever need them and never block the access routes. Using the right bins for any waste you may produce or clean up is a must. If you spill anything, use the appropriate spill control kit and get it contained straight away. If you come across a spill that you're not sure of, report it immediately to your supervisor. The company will regularly update you with health and safety and other training. Refresher courses are organised if certification needs updating, but please be aware of any personal retraining requirements and speak to your line manager about this. The company values their workforce and treats them with respect, investing time and effort in providing a safe, pleasant place to work. But everyone needs to bear responsibility for SheQ, regardless of their role. So, 
identify the risk, challenge if you think something isn't right, but above all, always work safely. Thank you.